Hey everyone, this is Christopher Luxon, the former CEO of Air New Zealand. This is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. This is Tracy Ibarra. I'm an executive solutions at Dell Technologies. This is Travis Chapel, founder of Build Your Network. If you are wanting to learn how to embrace change, to navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, my very good friend, Dennis Giannoutsos. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsos. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront some obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today. And if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. Hey, listeners, it's now time to adapt in our fast-moving world. And I want to welcome you to the Ask Dennis Freestyle episode. This is where I'm asked a question by our listeners, where I share my thoughts, insights, and experiences from working with many leaders around the globe. Hey, listeners, if you haven't already checked out the Facebook group or the LinkedIn page, we would love to see you there on those two different platforms and those communities and where we're talking about leadership and change and that leadership is changing. For those of you who are following me on social media, you would have noticed that this week I actually put a post up on both Facebook and my personal profile and also LinkedIn on my personal profile. And it is a offer, a trade offer. I'm asking people, because you see, I want to launch a new program. And I'm asking people to share with me their thoughts about leadership and so forth. And I got some questions. I'm only looking for around five to seven people. And I'm looking for people who I can interview. And the traders, I will also then spend up to about 45 minutes with you doing an audit around the way that you work. Are you really working strategically or not? And, And some other things too. So if you're really interested, go check out those posts. Put the word send on, on the actual either post or send me a message on through Facebook or LinkedIn privately and just put the word trade, T-R-A-D-E, trade. And that will then give me the idea to come to you and then we can have a talk. Spots and more is always gone anyhow, but uh, just, just putting it out there just in case there's someone out there who's got a burning desire to share with me their thoughts Because this program is going to be fantastic and I'm really looking forward to understanding what people are wanting or what what are they experiencing. So then that program can be created for that. Okay, today the topic is three hacks to flip the switch to focus. So what I want to talk to you about is a few things here. The question I've got here for you, well, there's a few of them. Are you constantly struggling to find your zone? Does it feel like you can't find the switch that will flip the light on? This is something whereby it will turn things on for you to allow you to stay focused and be in the zone. This is common today as well because we're in a fast-paced, ever-changing world. Distractions are constantly vying for our attention. Our focus is being split into more directions than we can be that can be found on a compass, to be honest. You run from meeting to meeting, email to email. I say this in the actual introduction of the show. People are being split everywhere, and there's more and more being thrown at you and it's amazing. These issues are often compounded by the stressful results of our lack of focus. I always talk about three things, discipline, focus, and consistency. Today, we're going to be talking about that focus. So it can be stressful for us and our results of lack of focus due to incomplete tasks, unfinished work, and the inability to connect with others when your mind is wandering. You see, many leaders start to become overwhelmed. Many leaders today are physically, mentally, and emotionally tired. The last two years being in lockdown, COVID, the unknown, a lot of that has been done that way and has actually forced us to be physically, mentally, and emotionally tired. People working from home, no transitions for them. 
not understanding how to get some boundaries around their work and then their life and that whole area of blurredness, that things are being blurred between the lines of work and life. Why? Because we don't have that transition period to work or back home again. But you know what? This doesn't have to be the case. You can find the switch and get it flipped into the on position with a little bit of work. It's almost where you go from being on autopilot, and that's being unconsciously doing things, to becoming consciously deliberate. Let me rephrase that again for you, right? We'll re-say it for you again. It's actually whereby you can go from being on autopilot, in other words, unconsciously doing things, to becoming consciously deliberate. And you're actually out there with some purpose and confidence. So I'm going to share with you three hacks that can help you flip the switch. Number one is going to be training your brain. Most likely you'll have poor focus because you're not exercising that muscle. Now, focus isn't actually a muscle in the body, but much like a muscle, it needs training to work properly at the maximum capacity that you need. And if you haven't used it for a while, you'll lose that muscle memory. It's the same as about going to the gym as well. If you don't go to the gym regularly and you haven't been for a long, long time, first few days, well, first of all, when you're in the gym, it's quite hard to do some of these exercises because the muscle has lost that memory. Then you've woken up the muscle, hello, and then you'll be sore for a few days after that, right? And so that's what we're talking about. If you haven't used them for a while, you'll lose that muscle memory. So turn off all the devices. Well, at least put them on to do not disturb. People, don't worry, people can still call you. If you're not on, uh, if you have it on, do not disturb. You just need to set it up so then key people can still call you. Start small by setting a time for yourself to work on a th- on a project, an item, an activity, and do that thing for about ten to fifteen minutes. Then follow it afterwards with a three minute break. And when you can do that successfully, then start increasing the length of time that you'll work. This will help strengthen your focus muscle. You know what? And it may not work. At first, however, trust the process and keep doing it. You see, if we can train our brain to do that, that'd be really good. Now, a lot of you are just always on, and you're, that's why you're physically, mentally, emotionally tired. You're not taking any breaks. Some of you are not even taking lunch breaks. Well, you're eating lunch, but you might be eating it there either on your front of your laptop, still doing emails. But you know what, Dennis? I'm really busy. Yeah, I know you're really busy. But if you keep flogging the, the high-performing car, and you don't give it the right breaks, and you don't give it enough the right fuel, food, water, the right oil, things like that, then what's going to happen is that you're going to actually have the engine seize sometime. And that engine being the brain, that engine being the body. And so you need to take some time out and take some breaks. And team, I mean, I'm really serious about this because this is where we're getting a lot of leader burnout and people are not just actually taking the time. They're always on. So how to stay focused, learn how to be consciously deliberate and learn how to do it, but start in small steps as we go. Number two, challenge yourself. Huh, what do we mean by this one? Sometimes losing focus isn't because we are unable to concentrate. It's because you're working on something that's not intriguing or exciting enough. For some of you, you're bored. It's like a bad movie or a book. Your mind will wonder when something more interesting is happening. Sometimes when you're, you're watching someone do a presentation or someone speaking up front, you know, you can wander because they're quite boring or they're at you, they're talking at you like a talking head. The thing here is that you have the ability to take on more interesting and challenging work. Put your hand up for more interesting and challenging work. The challenge of harder work or a more complex task will give your brain something to really focus on and work through instead of wandering around or wandering around looking for something of more interest. It's a team, a lot of you aren't challenged enough. A lot of you need that help. So that's number two. Number one is train, well, training your brain. Number two is challenge yourself. Number three, hmm, breaking the negative cycles. Wow. Stress and distraction are often cozy together. They go hand in hand. They feed off one another. Stress leads to distraction, which then leads to incomplete tasks, which then adds on more stress. It's a vicious cycle that actually happens. So what you need to do is find some productive forms of stress relief. Physical exertion, what do we mean by that? This could be all sorts of things like working in the garden, washing the car, going out exercising, but something physical that will get the heart rate up and going. Reading 
or anything that lowers your stress level and allows you then to focus. People I work with talk to me about they're actually out there swimming. And if they're out there swimming, they're focusing on the black line down the bottom, bottom of the pool. And it's just they're doing some exercise, but it's allowing them to focus and actually clear their mind, but also help them with their thinking. Others who are out for runs, they're actually out there thinking about the run and actually where they're stepping and so forth. And their, their whole focus will change and get away from a lot of the stress. People out cycling, people out cooking in the kitchen, people out going and doing things, that kind of stuff will actually help you with your focus. The other thing I'm going to say to you is, is, is uh, it's quite interesting whereby I actually tell people to turn the news off, turn the news feed off on your social media. Recently, what we've seen in, in this country here in New Zealand, that there's a whole lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of negativity out there. There's a lot of what I call noise. And if you can turn the noise and the bullshit off and focus on what you can control, your attitude and where you're going next, that's what's going to really help you. So what I had to do was stop watching news. I didn't really watch news much anyhow. But then the other one is turn the social media news off, any notifications coming up on my screens. And even some people who are into that media space or other areas, I just I just turn them all off, the notifications. And I'll tell you what, it has really, really helped me. And if you're feeling at the moment that you're struggling because of these negative cycles going on, that you're then being losing the focus, then you're not completing tasks, which is causing more stress for you, then find ways to get around it, okay? One is to go out and do some things physically, to, to do exertion. Another one could be reading. And another one could be going and doing something that's going to help lower the stress levels. For me, it was turning off the news feeds and other people on social media, and it's really helped me a lot. Because you see, if you can break the cycles of stress and distraction, that's going to free up your cognitive resources for focusing and completing tasks. And then in turn, that'll relieve you more of the stress. So we're helping you focus, relieving the stress, then then it will allow you to focus even more. Because if you can gain control of your focus, well, to be honest, it's not really an easy task. A lot of what I'm talking about is easy to say, but not always easy to do. It does take work. It does take time. And often there's some outside considering factors. Because you see, stress can come from those incompleted tasks. So taking the time to change or spot bad habits, in fact, stop those bad habits, create new positive habits, and then challenging yourself to focus more on results and a change and that will then cause a change attitude that will allow your ability to focus and then what you need to do. So listeners, I've covered off three hacks there to be able to flip the switch to allow you to focus. And it's number one, training the brain. Number two, challenging yourself. Number three, breaking the negative cycles. Alrighty team. Thanks for joining me on today's session. If you haven't already checked out the Facebook group or the LinkedIn page, we'd love to see you on those different platforms. Also go and check out that post I put up there about a trade that's available for you on my personal profile on both Facebook and LinkedIn. Just put the word trade in the actual comments or send me a private message that says trade and then I'll get you the details to you. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly scary, especially the unknown and unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Look out for the episodes as they're being released, download them, have a listen, put a review and a rating. Feel free to share it with your family, your friends, your network. If there's any feedback you'd like to give me about the show, or if there's a question for the Ask Dennis Freestyle episode, feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. Hey listeners, it's always a pleasure being with you. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world. 